Hi there. I'm Ronnie Newton. I'm the editor of WeHut.com, and we're here today with a very, very special program for you. This year is the 20th anniversary of the West Hartford Mayor's Charity Ball, and we thought it would be fun to bring back some of our former mayors who've been involved with the ball since its inception and talk about some of their favorite moments, what's changed since then, and um, other than maybe their haircuts or, or hair color, in, in one case. <laughs> I won't give you too hard a time. But uh, in any case, we would love to share with you what's happened with the Mayor's Ball since it started in 2000, I'm sorry, in 1999. And this year, in honor of that 20th anniversary and in honor of it being uh, 20 years since 1999, we're going to party like it's 1999. We'll have a toast to that a little bit later. Let me tell you who's here with us today and give them a chance to introduce themselves. Rob Bouvier, I was the mayor from 1995 to 1997. Nope, I take that back. 1999 to 2003. No, 1997 to 2001. 1997 to 2000. <laughs> yes. Well, I know I was the mayor. Yeah, you were. <laughs> you were very popular. You know, you, Thanks, Scott. You may have forgotten that. <laughs> it's been a long while. <laughs> Uh, I'm Scott Slivka. I think I was mayor, unless somebody corrects me, from 2004 to 2016. I'm pretty sure that's, well, that's quite okay. a run. Uh, yeah, the longest serving. Sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I have was been, have been mayor since 2016 till the present day. Uh, and we're missing Jonathan Harris, yeah. right? Who? Right. We have a quote from Jonathan. I'll read that okay. in, in a little while. But he's the gap between yeah. 2001 right. so 2001 to 2004 just, just was Jonathan. Jonathan sitting yeah. right there. In any case, Jonathan was was the mayor after Rob and before Scott, and he can't join us today, but he, he does have some words to include in this show. Um, but let me start with you, Rob. So the Mayor's Charity Ball, was was it your idea? It was certainly you were involved in, in the ball's inception. What, what led you to want to have some event like a Mayor's Charity Ball? Well, I remember it was 1999. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I went to uh, an event here at Town Hall called um, the Bridge Follies, and it was a fundraiser on a Saturday night, and I remember getting together with Margaret Hahn the next day at, um, uh, at, for breakfast and to say, how much did we raise? And I remember her telling me it was around $400. Mm. And Margaret and Hahn, the she, executive director of executive, the Bridge She Family just Center. took over uh, as executive director of the Bridge Family Center. Uh, and I said, Margaret, we got to do better than that. Mm -hmm. um, only because we didn't want that much uh, dependency on the town budget, right? I mean, to, to alleviate some of that pressure. Uh, and she was open to ideas and, and kind of uh, came up with the, uh, bridge, uh, the bridge benefiting from the Mary's Charity Ball. And at the time, it benefited the bridge as well as Hope Works. Hope Works. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how much was raised that first year? You know, I don't. I, I, I just barely recalled when I served as mayor, so I don't know how much I could, I could recall that we raised, but I know it was substantially more. Um, and it was an idea that I, I, I took from uh, East Hartford. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it was uh, Tim Larson at the time, mm -hmm. uh, in their, their event, uh, raised uh, uh, pretty good funds for their nonprofit. So I said, why don't we give it a try here and do something more, more substantial? So it worked well. That's great. And do you know how many people, do you remember where it was or how many people attended that well, first this year? this is 20 years ago. Oh, I my goodness, I, know, I was tempted I know. to say, Ronnie, I thought there'd be no math. So <laughs> sorry, this sorry. Is... No, I know it was at the Hartford Golf Club, and I remember it was a black tie event. It was a big splash, and, I, and I'm trying to think who the original MC was. I know Scott Haney came in pretty mm -hmm. early on mm -hmm. in these fundraisers, but I don't know if he was one of the very first uh, that, that hosted it. So, well, the, the ball has evolved, actually, over the years, and um, it has passed from mayor to mayor as the chairperson. How about, Scott, when you were the mayor, what, what are some of the highlights you remember from your years uh, attending the ball? Th many years. Yeah, well, I remember I mean, the first thing I remember was how intimidated I was the first time I went because it was, it was in, I think early 2002, they were held in the, the winter time or so. And I had just gotten elected to the council and I had been away at law school for the first, the first few uh, mayor's balls. And so this was my first time there. I didn't know anything about it in advance. And, um, and I just, I was like, what is this thing? And it hurt. And by that time it actually had become a real thing. I know Rob being very modest about the, the start of it, but in very short order, it became something lots of people talked about and I almost felt like I didn't belong. Um, 
but so I remember that that piece of it and kind of hanging with Jonathan Harrison. He was he was newly elected as mayor and he sort of didn't know what to do. And that, that's where the joke began that like when you become mayor, they don't give you a salary, but they do give you this ball every year. <laughs> and that was the one benefit. Um, so I remember that one. I remember the first one when I was mayor because if I if I recall correctly, there was a major snowstorm and not the ones that you know, later had all the phone calls and things, but they didn't know if the ball was gonna go forward. So I was at home waiting for a call that officially the Hartford Golf Club was actually gonna have enough people to staff it. And then we got there and we didn't know if any people were gonna show. And it was almost 100% attended that night. And it was really bad weather. I mean, it was not an easy thing for people to do. So went from thinking, oh my God, the whole thing is gonna be a failure to it was a resounding success. Uh, and then I remember the last one um, that where I, where I was mayor before Sherry took over, where it was only a few days before I actually left office. And one nice thing that the, um, the folks who organized the ball let me do when she became old enough is they let me bring my daughter, who uh, is back working the, um, the audio with Jen Evans in the, uh, in the control room here. Um, but she, so she'd gone for several years, and it was always a lot of fun. But that particular night, she was dancing like crazy. And oh, sort of I took, took over. You took a lot of, of photos that night, and it was just incredibly memorable, you know, as a dad. And it kind of brought a full circle, as cliched as that might sound. That you know, the first ball, I was I was uh, um, newly married and didn't have a child. And at the end, when I'm leaving, I'm dancing with my daughter, who's really kind of dancing on her own. You know, it wasn't because dad forced her to. This was she was having a good time, and it was really great to have seen all of that and experienced all of it. You were the youngest. Mayor and the longest serving mayor, right? Because right at a long momentarily, <laughs> it's a, no, it's, yes, momentarily. Yeah. hang in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sherry, um, since you've been presiding over the last two, or this is your third one. This will be my. What, what are some of your memories of the ball? I know you've attended. So I most guess of them. I was I attended a number of times, and I actually um, I, I was I think when you were mayor, and then I, when when Scott was mayor, a number of times. I missed only a, a couple. Um, and I do remember that snowstorm so well. And it was actually, we had several times where there was snow. It may not have been such a bad snowstorm, but it was a kind of a joke where we would bring our shoes, right? You'd wear boots and you would change into your dress <laughs> shoes because yeah. it, it was painful if you were walking in the snow in your dress shoes. But for me, it's kind of different because um, I have four sons, and so they were, I, I've been on the, I, been on the council a long time, 2004, when my youngest son was in second grade, um, and now he's graduating college. So uh, it's quite a, a, you know, been quite a journey, and I think, you know, my kids know the commitment that um, I've made. They've worked on campaigns, you know, all those kinds of things, and, um, you know, to have them and my 90-year-old mom last year and have my kids dancing with mm -hmm. my mom, who so loves to dance and is trying to teach them to dance. <laughs> and this, you know, when they get frustrated because she's like, hey, let's do a bossa nova. And they're like, well, you know, but <laughs> it's, it's really a special. It's been such a special night for, for our family. And actually, that's the day this year is the day my oldest son is graduating from a UConn MBA program. And my youngest son will be graduating college the following year, uh, the following week. I'm sorry. So uh, it's been a really special thing for the community, um, but also I think we all have our personal family. And I remember when Dorothy was picking her dress, and I'm very good friends with your si your sister-in-law. And I remember that was an exciting <laughs> time. She was I was seeing pictures of it, not on cell phones because there weren't cell phones. <laughs> it was like real pictures. Yeah. Um, and and uh, yeah, there's so a lot of lot of good times. I think I danced with your mother, too. You did. So. You did. Yeah. It's hard to keep up with, <laughs> with Jerry's she's, mother. She's no. still, she's she's yeah, she wore still, me out. Yeah, she wants Quite to know what to wear it. for the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> sure, so. That's it's great. a lot of color. Oh, yeah. That's what you need to wear. Well, actually, yeah. What, so do you know what you're going to wear this year? I don't. It's I don't really know what people wore decision. in 1990. Rob and I are fairly confident what we're going to wear. But <laughs> Black tie? Some <laughs> variation on that. With yeah. the color. 90s is tough. <laughs> well, I don't remember anything that's iconically 90s. I'm yeah. not sure. Not that was good. That, no, no. <laughs> yeah, not that was good. No. Bright colors, I think. You know, teals, blues, pinks. Okay. Well, I, I did it anyway. So. Yeah. Exactly. So, Ronnie, I feel easy. like I should channel Jonathan Harris for a moment since he's not here. Okay. But, but Do you want to read his quote here? I don't feel worthy of that, but, okay. but I, I could say, I think a memory he and I both have, because we, we've kidded about over time, was there was a period of four or balls or so where they 
they put us into the entertainment. And uh, Rob was part of this as well until he smartened up one year and had to be hats. elsewhere. Uh, but but yes, we had they decided to make us part of skits, yeah. and we did one. It was, it was Rob and I and Jonathan and Kevin Sullivan, and I think that was it at the time. And then another year, Katie Reynolds was brought in, and I'm trying to remember if anyone else came in. But um, what people didn't appreciate, it was very funny, and we enjoyed it. But there was an immense amount of rehearsal oh, yeah. that had to go into it. And this finally, the one year, it was Jonathan and I and Katie doing the Blues Brothers. And it was super fun, and there's this great photo of the three of us just dressed up as the Blues Brothers and singing. And I think we did a pretty good job, but there were weeks of rehearsals that went into this. And I remember the one we did together, where it was actually like a seven-part dance sequence, and it was really hard. And that, and now I think Sherry can appreciate because she's got the problem now. I know how relaxed I was when I went to the ball last year because I neither had to speak nor greet everyone as if it were my wedding. But also, I didn't have to remember dance steps and a song that was customized yeah. for the event. So they were really great to do, but I remember the pressure of, that was of the going through all that. Right? Was that the 10th That was the 10th okay. So yeah. that was, you know, so I actually brought this, um, which was a story that I wrote back for a publication, several publications ago that I, that I worked for, and I, I interviewed you guys about, I didn't interview Sherry at the time because she, was um, actually not was even on the, the council. council. She was on the council. Or you were on the council at the time, but, but not, not the mayor. But I interviewed you guys about your experiences at the ball, and that year, Jen O'Hurley was the yes. mm -hmm. um, host of the ball. So anybody have any memories of that year other than the, the Blues Brothers? And I, I did write about how much You mean you, you remember John O'Hurley more than me and Jonathan Harris singing? I'm I, just I, shocked. I remember both. I, I <laughs> definitely remember both. Well, there I is a great photo of, of Sherry yes. dancing with So him. I, I actually that. bid on a, da a dance with John O'Hurley, and we, we did dance. And um, and I my dad is a really phenomenal dancer, and I and I and he's a good, was, was, Really good, he's passed. But um, and I remember my <laughs> I was a little lost with John Orlea because he was supposed to be you know dancing with the stars. So I was a little. But we have this great photo and it's hanging in the uh, this back hall of my house. So my husband was in New York on a business trip and went to a convention and it was a trash convention, nice. <laughs> something something like a technology. And he bumps into John O'Hurley and he said. Uh, he texts me, he goes, take a picture of that picture. So I can, so sure enough, I take a picture of the picture, I text it to Michael, and then they redid the picture together so it looked like <laughs> Michael neat. dancing with John. <laughs> it's really, cool. it's really kind of funny. So, and he talked about West Hartford and his fond memories of West Hartford and uh, what a great community it is, and he would love to come back. So I thought that yeah, was he, he grew up, I believe it was on, on Westmont. Yes. Went to Kingswood. Mm -hmm. yep. And he was just, he was hysterical. Yeah. I mean, he, he started was. by saying something like, hey, and we've got Trout Brook. And he goes, there hasn't been a Trout in that brook since I've known Trout Brook. Exactly. And he's right. just a funny guy, yeah, and, and yeah. we're lucky to have him. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it was really it was fun. Much, much less that. cool than Sherry's story. He, he had called my house and left the message. We had answering machines, <laughs> and I didn't erase the message for like three or four years. And my <laughs> friends are like, look, I have Mr. Peterman on my answering machine right that's here. Terrific. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. Well, he very much has that voice. Yes. So oh, he the, does. Either he it's does. his natural voice or the voice he uses mm -hmm. all the time now since he um, introduced that Jay Peterman character on... Uh, Seinfeld. Oh, Seinfeld. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we haven't had any of the champagne yet, I promise. No. We'll have that as a, as a toast at the end. Um, any, any other memories of any hosts? Actually, David Steinberg, who was the host. and So for a couple of years, there were some guest hosts. It was kind of like a Hollywood comes to West Hartford theme for the ball. Um, David Steinberg, who is a director, screenwriter in, in Hollywood now, went to Hall, went to Yale Law School, or went to Yale, went to Duke Law School, moved to California, and has written a bunch of things, including a, a Netflix series that just came out uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, he was the host the following year, and he, he was a really funny guy, too. Anybody have any other memories of any of the other hosts? We've had Scott Haney, we've had um, Dennis House and, and Kara Sundlin right. in the past mm -hmm. few years. Yeah, and they're, they're hosting again this year. And they are? Yes. Okay. We're looking right. forward to partying like it's 1999. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking the 90s fashion, what to wear. And Dennis suggested a few things, and Karen said no. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dennis, we'll last see. year, I don't know if maybe maybe this will be shown as part of this promo piece, but Dennis wore a gold lame tuxedo last year, which might actually 
be uh, appropriate to wear again this year. <laughs> but he'll, I'm sure he'll come up with something. He, he is a pretty snazzy dresser. <laughs> is that the right word to use? I don't know. That's probably a, a word that dates me. Well, we've been talking about Seinfeld extensively, so we, we've all dated ourselves right, yeah, in some right, way. Right. And that's, that's true. Uh, that's the young true. demographic is not certain on the J. Peter. Maybe we should all call us J. Peter because that's not a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> so, so outside of the ball being fun, it's also been really, really effective as a fundraiser for some West, Har West Hartford nonprofits. Uh, the first number of years, it was the Bridge and Hope Works, and since then, we've introduced Playhouse on Park and the Town That Cares Fund as the recipients, um, and, and millions of dollars, definitely over a million dollars anyway, have been raised over the years for, for these organizations. Does anybody have any feeling about how, just how awesome it is that, that an event that started kind of small has turned into not only West Hartford's signature event, but also so valuable for these West Hartford nonprofits? Right, and, and I think that that's what inspires all of us to put our support behind this, this event, right? Um, just for the nonprofits that it, that it helps to support and the good work that they do. Uh, and, and really the heavy lifting is all the volunteers mm -hmm. behind the scenes, starting with Tracy and, and the rest of the folks that, I know Judy barely worked on this with, mm -hmm. with Margaret Hahn in the early years and, and with her committees and, and just putting together the time and, and the effort and the energy to make this thing come off with the way it has and raise the money that it's been able to raise. So hats off to them and, and the community that pulls together to, to support it. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. So much happens behind the scenes. There's so much work that's done to make this event seamless. We actually, once it moved to May, it became sort of um, a, a comically rain event, <laughs> like yes. a heavy rain event. Rid of the snow. And you would be yeah. dressed yeah. to the <laughs> nines and then, but they, you, they, it was arranged so that everybody could be you know walk in a way that they weren't impacted by the wet weather and um, it was it's just it's been a, a and the really heat that's been yeah, pumped exactly, in certain years exactly yes. some years have been so cold I think my mother was ready to take the tablecloth and put it around her one year <laughs> but um, it is really a, an important part of of uh, bringing our community together to benefit some whatever those um, uh, nonprofits are. The bridge still is our, you know, they are our agency that helps with all kinds of social service, uh, but especially with adolescents um, and families. Um, and our town that cares is our social service. Um, it's kind of a hard thing to talk about and share the stories personally because it's fuel assistance and the food pantry and, and w many other l l small things that actually can impact somebody's life so profoundly. Uh, and you're right, the town has continued pressures on the budget and we, we can't do all we want to do. So um, this kind of uh, you know, philanthropy is so important to letting us serve our community and people want to be there to do that. Uh, and of course, the Playhouse on Park, I'll say when we, I think, first made that Money Magazine sort of top tier list, it was because of the Playhouse on Park, I think that was that glue and how important it is for a local theater to share those human stories uh, and that we all can learn from and they do so many ed educational programming uh, as well as the entertainment program and they do so. And we have a talented community that steps up quite frequently. Yeah. Yeah. I remember uh, <clears throat> when, I, when I first got elected to the council that the, somehow we're in one of these you know, boring budget committee meetings or something. And, but in it, um, and maybe it was a couple minutes after it ended, but Barry Feldman, who was the manager at the time, started explaining to me the economics involving the ball and and uh, why why Rob had decided to put it together and I really didn't know anything about it at the time and I was like, oh, what's this ball you know and then when I heard it Rob told sort of the story at the beginning um, that you had these these hyper local um, nonprofits where we really would see the impact of the work but also as, as both Sherry and Rob said we all the town is also paying for it in a way and there's there's kind of a a benefit to the government to help run the town, run the ball, as well as benefit these charities. Um, I like kind of light bulb went off. I said, "This is this is kind of a cool thing that, that Rob has put together." And I think since then, what we probably all have liked, starting with Rob, but but up to today, is that you actually this isn't 
esoteric. It, it's not one of these things where you send your money off and you, you hope that you, you hear something good about what it did or you see a video and that's it. This is something, and particularly for those of us that worked in town government, you could actually see the impact every day and it could be the impact on a child's life, but it's also to something like the playhouse where it's not just really putting on great art, it's also the glue of that Park Road community. And Sherry had said had putting a greater benefit beyond just the shows was it's putting West Hartford on the map mm -hmm. uh, on a national basis. And when you, when you can feel that direct connection between the little bit of the contribution we would make to it, but helping it go along, you do re realize the importance of what you're doing and particularly what those volunteers have been doing. Excellent. So this year, what can what can we look for at the ball? We've got Kara Sundland and Dennis House emceeing. We've got a tent on the lawn of Town Hall. What what else do we? Motion, which their music is oh, yeah. so much fun. Very and fun. They are amazing, and we also have entertainment with the, the dancers that we had before, and it's just an amazing show. Really, I don't know. You, do you, when you go to a nonprofit, you don't aren't in, or a, a charity event. You aren't entertained necessarily in the same way that you are at this event. And uh, again, it's right on our front lawn, right? So it's this beautiful tent, uh, and we have the Doro Group doing the food. Uh, that's so. Uh, it's definitely not. Not rubber chicken. It's at, not at this rubber event. chicken. <laughs> food no, is no, really no. good. So yeah, it's Dorian Puka, who is the owner of Treva Aver and Zohara, in that order, um, and he really is so appreciative. He's a West Hartford resident. Uh, he's an Armenian immigrant, uh, and he is so. Um, involved in this community and the fabric and always wants to give back and it's just a really beautiful uh, way that he he contributes and um, and he's thrilled to do it so uh, we're really it'll be a it'll be a great night well before I forget I just want to make sure we give Jonathan Harris his rep representation here in this conversation so I'm gonna read read the quote from Jonathan Jonathan said the mayor's ball reflects and celebrates what has made the West Hartford community so special a diverse group of active, engaged citizens coming together to make a difference and having a lot of fun in the process. Well, so the record, he's a from Albania, not Armenia. I would like Albania. <laughs> no, that's not right. Oh, it's sorry, Albania. sorry, yeah, sorry. Not, not Jonathan. Yeah, Dorian. 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 Not, not Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jonathan's from West Hartford. Yes, he is. I think. And, and the fact that this is, uh, this has survived the 20 years yes. is a testament to all of us to continue the tradition. Uh, you know, that uh, along with the, the generosity and the support of the residents of this town, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 20, 20 years is, is tremendous and the money they've raised, I think it's closing in on close to $2 million in total. Uh, and those are real dollars that go right to helping people, as Scott, you said, and, and Sherry, you know the real needs, mm -hmm. you see it day in and day out, and some of them are just heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you can make a difference with something like this, it, it makes it all the more special, right? Absolutely. So. Everybody got their uh, got their ball shoes, their dancing shoes on, I ready for so. ready for this year's ball. <laughs> well, that that should be one of the incentives to go because you get to see whatever uh, Sherry comes up with. You know, when Rob and I and John, that was a little boring. Yes. There's no surprise <laughs> in what we would do. But a lot of pressure. There's a, That's there, a you learn how to you're, dance. You're, I gotta you're pick. Good at the, you can take that. Break. <laughs> so, well. so so outside of the ball, if you guys were to pick one thing about what makes West Hartford so special. I'm gonna put you all on the spot. In a sentence or two, what would you say? Yeah, I would just say that the, the people, I mean, the people of this town, uh, just, just this awareness of, of need and helping out each other and, and, and the leadership, town government, and, and uh, being uh, tied into that and responding accordingly. You've been a terrific uh, mayor. Both of you have been uh, great mayors. And you know, it's not been easy. Um, and I know what it was like when I was mayor and the town budgets uh, working with the state have gotten uh, much uh, more difficult, mm -hmm. <laughs> not less difficult. Right. Uh, I, I don't think they're giving you more money to, 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 to work with. So it really um, challenges uh, your creativity and how you deliver the services that you want to deliver without raising taxes just as an automatic, right? So that you're, you're attracting and retaining some, some of the older residents and, and having some of the newer residents want to move into town. I think uh, it's, it's very well said. I think I, I'd say it's, it's a community where um, people give a damn and they expect to participate. So it's not a place where um, they're passive. You know, they, they care, they're passionate, but they don't just complain about it. They actually do something about it. And I think that is, 
one of the fundamental differences you find between West Hartford and other community is just that degree of involvement. Yeah. I couldn't agree more with both comments. And like Helen Rubino Turco always said, you know, it, it, this is not a spectator sport. You get in there and you yeah. and you do things, and that's it. Keeps us not only. Um, I think that the uh, demands and the expectations are so high for people that step into these positions uh, and we are accountable and people are watching and they do I hear all the time about how impressed people are with the responsiveness and the way that we really do care I mean partly because of the structure it's volunteer you know it's, we don't get paid for this uh, so you really are in this because you care but the com it's all about the community and I remember Ron Van Winkle saying you don't just buy a house you buy into a community and that was mm -hmm. still it's still <coughs> the case and that's I think you more unique every year in the United States of America yeah, yeah sure is well and even that that says something about you deciding that West Hartford needed a ball in the first place because how many communities care about themselves enough that they decide they're going to have this event to benefit the community sponsored by the mayor I don't think it's something that's that's very common usually it's a single charity that has its fundraiser whether it's a hospital or a symphony or something like that but this is a West Hartford a really signature West Hartford event that celebrates the town Yes. And yes, and it's supporting the nonprofits that had a proven track record of serving mm -hmm. the residents of West Hartford that we felt we wanted to make that commitment to with real dollars, you mm -hmm. know, and taking a little bit of pressure off the, the town budget at the same time, but giving them something they could serve their, their, their people with. And I think if, Rob, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you had set uh, the tone at the beginning of, one, you wanted to make sure every dollar stayed in town, that was the first piece, and then you had more than one beneficiary was yes. an important yes, thing. We did. And I think that as, as time has gone mm -hmm. on, those and, and some of the partners have changed and, and, yeah. and such that that was a challenge to, to maintain that. And there were times where people would mm -hmm. suggest, well, maybe we should back away from that. And that that spirit still remained that, no, this is the one one night of the year that it's just about West Hartford and things need to stay here and we need to spread it out as much as is feasible. That's, that's right on, Scott. Well said, yes. Absolutely. Well, you did it, so I'm just repeating. <laughs> <laughs> and it is a separate board. It's a nonprofit in and of itself, right? It's a, and it has a board that meets and, you know, it's a completely separate from anything that the town does. So um, I, I just do want people to make sure that that's a volunteer committed board that's very um, ambitious about what their, what their expectations are for the evening. And I'm sure everybody here, and Jonathan too, got this at some point in time where they, it would be mistaken as the mayor's inaugural ball. Yes. Make right, sure right. anybody who no. hasn't been paying attention, that is not the case. I think that in January that was more of a threat than in yeah. May, but, right. you know, probably. Yeah. Although uh, you, you yeah. took over as mayor in May, That's right? true. That's right? true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it could have been, well, <laughs> but you weren't officially mayor until the ball the next year. Right, right, right. So why don't we have a toast to this year's mayor's charity ball and to the success and to the ability to raise lots of funds for our local nonprofits and also to a nice day where our feet aren't going to sink into the dirt and uh, the wind won't be blowing through the tent flaps yeah mm -hmm. and I, I shouldn't say that in a negative way because really it does it does stay nice it's all warm. memorable <laughs> right and to no. tracy and all the volunteers yes yes to the, the event that, that it truly is so, here here cheers, cheers. <laughs> cheers.